What is Sufism part 4? I am giving you a totally different yet broader and cosmic picture. It is always said that when man does good he is prompted by one force and when he follows the path of negative he is prompted by another force. From the very beginning this creates duality. Electric current does so many goods to you. It gives you light. Electric current gives you light. Through air conditioner it gives you cold air. Through heater it gives you hot air, it cooks your food, it gives you music, it connects you. These are the benefits that we all reap of electricity. But then when electricity gives you a shock, is it a different entity? When your fridge is not working or your central heating system is not working, is it a different force that making it do something different? No. There is a malfunction either in the brain of the device or in the supply of the electric current. Supply of the electric current to the particular equipment is known as connection just as through your breathing you are connected to the cosmos. If breathing stops, everything stops. If that somehow the other that current is not reaching, it happens sometimes there is a power outage. Something like that does not happen in case of human beings. It's not that there the power supply which is your breathing is cut off at its source. It does not happen. The only thing happens is that the brain of the equipment, AC, your lighting system or anything has a malfunctioning at its brain or its mechanism then that function is not performed and you do not get the required result we all know this but man has grown physically he has not grown as far as awareness is concerned his brain it is said that human brain does not grow more than the age of five or six. Just as a child knows that it is God who sends the children or the angels, he cannot understand anything beyond this. So too is our religious understanding. We are infant and do not want to go out of that infant understanding. Good and bad. The supply of the electric current and the absence of it. The lighting of the bulb and the absence of it depends not on the electricity alone. It depends on the electricity and the brain that converts that electric current into the light. In the same way, the cosmic energy or consciousness is constantly flowing. There has never been a time when it is not there and there will never be a time that the cosmos of the world be deprived of it.
always there. Only thing is this, we are not able to establish connections through it. This requires a deep understanding. Once you have that, you know and you can never be disconnected with that which is divine. And unless this understanding comes, you are not really a religious person. We in our ignorance consider that Bhagavad Gita is for Hindus, Holy Quran is for Muslims and Bible is for Christians. Does it mean that electricity is only for Christians because it was devised by an individual who was of Christian faith or television or something else? We do not make such distinctions. We do not inquire who invented this bulb, was he a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian or the air that we breathe is Hindu, Muslim or Christian? No. These are the treasures which existence has given us. It happened that that treasures was expressed in a particular language for a particular set of people at a particular time. I am speaking to you because you all are familiar with English language. Had there been a person who is not familiar with English language, would, will he be able to understand the message or the talk? Certainly not. And when I have to give examples to assert my point, I have to pick up the examples from the surrounding areas. If I have to explain chair to you, each one of you know what chair is. But if I have to give you a specific design, then I have to give many explanations to explain to you what a particular design of the chair that I am talking about. We all know chair is made up of wood, metal or wicker because we have wicker wares also, wicker furniture. It is a device on which we sit for different purposes, for relaxation, for work, for entertainment. So for that very reason its form and shape changes but its basic function remains the same. We all know this. When Bhagavad Gita says that Arjun was in a state of dilemma, he did not know what is right and what is wrong. He was not able to make a decision on his own whether fight is good or not. Does this situation not happen with each one of you on a day-to-day -day basis? We are caught up in duality, conflict and duality creates conflict, conflict creates pain and it soaps you from your path of blissful existence. You do not know whether to drink water or Coke or Pepsi. You are very indecisive everything. At that moment, what is that guides you? Is it your intelligence? It is, is it your mind? No, there is a force that works behind the mind, thoughts and intellect. And that force is your awareness or is consciousness. It is through consciousness that you are connected to the whole. 
you are conscious you are and through that you are becoming aware of your surroundings you are becoming aware of what is what kind of beverage is good for you and what is not then is it is very easy for you to make the decision which is the guiding force it is your consciousness which comes to you in the form of awakening consciousness is the cosmic force when it comes to you and it is stationed in your device it comes as an awakening awakening brings understanding and through understanding you know this particular beverage is good and this is not good this particular oil is better than the other and you make your decision so if i put it here your life is a constant struggle in which you have to make decisions on a moment to moment basis you are in the battlefield in the battlefield you need a vehicle consciousness is your vehicle and awakening is the charioter and it is the charioter who takes your chariot in the right places and ultimately the decisions ultimately whatever has to be done is you have to do but it is your charioter it is your awakening and through which the understanding that comes guides your steps every moment remember awakening is your charioter and your body mind and intellect realm is the chariot on which you ride every day guided by your awakening and then you continue through life's roads and attain to the ultimate bliss but what happens in the absence of this we are all neurotic and the more civilized you are the more neurotic you are and you are almost on the verge of madness this earth is a big mad house a few people have already become mad while a few are potentially ready the difference between you and the mad person is not of the quality it is only a matter of quantity the difference is of degrees maybe you have gone beyond the 100 degrees maybe they have gone beyond the 100 degrees and you are just lingering somewhere near 90s any moment any situation can push you beyond the boundary don't you see it can't you observe your mind can't you see the madness that goes on and on inside it is continuously there waiting for the opportunity to explode to me to be an animal which is symbol of sufism in the form of wool implies to be innocent innocence is a spontaneous and natural quality it knows no morality or immorality to be an animal is not a condemnation a saint is more like animals than like you the difference between a mouse and you is his innocence and his spontaneity that is why he is more like an animal than like the so called human beings the human beings are not natural they are very unnatural they are artificial plastic like you are taught to behave in a particular manner in the society you may be boiling deep within but outside you have to show courtesy you have to show mannerism their whole life is a life of deception if you touch somebody's face you will really never touch his face 
you touch only his mask and remember your hand is also not true it has a glove on it an invisible glove even lovers do not touch each other even in love you are not really innocent even in love you are not without your mask but when you want to love god you have to be totally without mask you have to drop all deceptions you have to be authentically whatsoever you are you have to be choiceless be be whatsoever you are in that primal innocence god descends so the reason that idrisha finds to condemn the definition that sufis come from sufi are exactly the reason i approve of it you avoid it you get occupied in a thousand and one things just to avoid it you do not look at it you want to forget about it it is too scary and frightening but it is there and whether you avoid it or not it goes on growing it is continuously accumulating momentum it can come to the peak any moment a small thing can trigger it when you choose you have to repress animals do not choose whatsoever is actually is the animal simply accepts it its acceptance is total it knows no choice a sufi knows no choice he is choicelessly aware whatsoever happens he accepts it as a gift as a god given thing who is he to choose he does not trust his mind instead he trusts in the universal mind that is why when you come across a sufi you will see such animal innocence in his eyes and in his being there is an expression of such freedom such joy as only animals know or trees or rocks or the stars manifest the wool represents animal and that is why because of this primal innocence that animals represent sufis have chosen the wool as their symbol and green color is symbol of universality because all around in the existence there is green color this is the reason that sufis use wool and animal as a symbol this is a rare experience sufism is such a rare experience and idrisha has done tremendous work in creating a sufi character in mulla nasiruddin and through this character he has hit human ignorance and unconsciousness in many ways i love him for this but i do not accept when he says about the symbol of animal as the symbol for sufism animals symbolizes innocence so is a sufi this is the reason sufis have chosen this symbol it is a natural and a spontaneous choice i have heard once a dog bit a man who was in sufi garb at this the man hit the dog with a stick then the dog went to the city chief to lodge the complaint against the man who had hit him with the stick the chief who is called a qazi according to the muslim tradition he called the two parties together he is like a village 
judge. So he called the two parties, he listened to the plaintiff and the defender. Now it was the time for the judgment. The dog bit the man and then the man hit the dog with his stick. The chief said this is quite the situation. Surprised. The chief asked the dog why was he complaining when he bit the man first? Because you bit the man and this is the reason he hit you back. The case is squared now. There is no case then. But then the chief got surprised when the dog said that his complaint was not against the man who hit him. The dog said, when I saw this man in a Sufi garb, I bit him to test if he really is a Sufi, the innocent one. But this man is a deceit in a Sufi garb. A Sufi is bound to be an innocent one. Sufi is the one who cannot harm anyone. My complaint is that this man is deceiving as a Sufi. Such was the time when no one could deceive in a Sufi car. And now see what is happening. I do not know if this happened really, but the parable gives very important message. Such is the Sufi way. This is how we go on living. All our religion is just like that verbal. It does not penetrate into your being and you know that whatsoever you say you do not accept exactly mean and you do exactly the opposite of it. You think one way, say another and do something else. You are a trinity, not one. And all these three persons are going in three different directions. You are a crowd and this is the cause of your misery, conflict, pain and agony. The animal is one and this is the cause of the blissfulness of the animal. The animal has nothing whatsoever to be happy about. He has not a big place to live in. He has no television, no radio, no internet or all that you consider entertainment. He has nothing and yet you will find a great peace, silence, joy and celebration. Why? One thing is there. The animal is not a chooser. The Sufi is not a chooser either. Choose and you deceive. Choose and you start going false. Choose and you become plastic.